And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TOM. 1-800-5-800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks, big part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. This is a story several listeners sent to me, and I'm going to read it to you. But before I do, you know, I, I'd like to tell you to listen to it with a particular ear. In this case, do you think this guy did anything wrong? I will read you the story, and then I want you to tell me if this guy, the focus of the story, did anything wrong. Ready? Here it is. This is from the Seattle Post Intelligencer. <laughs> I love this. By the way, I strongly suspect the subject of this story is a listener or was a listener at one time or another. Just a guess. Here it is. For months, a Boston area woman thought she was dating a Seattle Supersonics front office employee and former NBA player named Jeff Turner, a handsome Six foot eight something, 40 something, who was polite, compassionate, and respectful. She thought she had scored a figurative slam dunk in the internet dating game. But when the man she was falling for suddenly left his Somerville, Massachusetts home and stayed away for three weeks, the woman became suspicious. A Google search helped her discover that this man was not Jeff Turner, <laughs> but a habitual imposter who had been posing as a Sonics employee for the past several months. <laughs> Where did he learn how to do that? <laughs> Says here, just when it appeared matters couldn't become any more bizarre for Seattle's downtrodden basketball franchise... The Sonics have emerged as victims in a case of identity fraud perpetrated by a smooth talking, I'm sorry, perpetrated by a smooth talking con man. I'm going to be honest with you, I don't work for them. The man who posed as Turner said from his home in Somerville, a Boston suburb, when reached by the Seattle PI on Monday. This this gets so good, you're not going to believe it. This is the guy himself talking to the Seattle Post Intelligencer. She said it. He said it was all brought on by an online dating thing on Craigslist. I lied to her. Does that mean I can go out there and represent the Sonics? No. Does it mean that I did it to get some? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it says here, the man's real name is Ronnie Craven. There, there's a picture of him in the article. And he had been telling friends and even his hometown newspaper that he was the Sonics player development director. <laughs> in an April 9th story in the Somerville News, he told the paper he had known Sonics general manager Sam Presti since coaching Presti. And Seahawks quarterback Matt Hasselbeck at a Boston area basketball camp in the late 1980s. 
Craven told the paper he spent time on the Sonic sideline during games and served as a part-time assistant coach working with Jeff Green, Kevin Durant, and other players. Craven even was quoted as saying, this is in the Somerville News he was quoted. He was quoted as saying, no one was happier than me to see that. After Green scored a career-high 35 points in an April 6th victory over the Denver Nuggets. Boy, he played it to the hilt. And it says here, Craven's misrepresentation was not exclusive to the Boston area. The PI learned that Craven was at the Seattle Athletic Club in February, telling fellow pickup basketball players that he was former Stanford and NBA player Todd Lichty, 41 who retired from the NBA in 1994. Now, Craven is 6'8", and Lichty is listed at 6 feet 4, according to basketballreference.com. Well, come on. I mean, who's going <laughs> to... You're, you're out there. You're doing a little pick-up basketball. What are you going to do? You're going to log on to www... You're going to get online and start looking it up? If the guy lied and said he was Michael Jordan, that would be one thing. But he didn't. And nobody bothered to check. Says here, National Basketball Association security officials approached Presti at the league's pre-draft camp in Orlando last week and showed him the Somerville News story, which featured a picture of a smiling Craven wearing a Sonics coaching shirt. (laughs) Presti denied knowing Craven, and the club later released a statement regarding his supposed employment. We all know chicks don't read the paper. What good would that do? He has never been an employee of the organization in any capacity, Sonic spokesman Tom Savage said. And we will continue to work with NBA security on the matter. NBA spokesman Tim Frank acknowledged a league investigation into the matter, but declined to comment further. Savage said the Sonics contacted the Somerville News to inform the paper that Craven does not work for them, and the newspaper has pulled the story from its website. Craven said he was contacted last week by a lawyer representing something called the Professional Basketball Club LLC, which is the name of the ownership group of the Sonics, and he was presented with a cease and desist order that threatened criminal action. If he benefited financially from his purported link to the team. Well, there's no evidence that he did that. During a revealing phone interview on Monday, Craven admitted he was dishonest with the woman, the local newspaper, and many longtime friends about his ties to Presti and the Sonics. It, it, this wasn't meant to be anything negative toward the Sonics, said Craven, who said he has three daughters, is separated from his wife, and works in property management. People get lied to all the time. Did I do anything illegal against the Sonics? No. Did I go out and represent the Sonics in any fashion? I'm not actually proposing that I did that. Did I do this for the broad? (laughs) Yes. The broads at Seattle are all upset to see the word broad in the Seattle paper. (laughs) Hmm. Says here, the woman who dated Craven said she met who she thought was Turner on a dating website. And the two went out about 12 times. I like to get on uh, dating websites to tell people I'm a radio personality. It's very effective. Says here, she was convinced Craven was really Turner, a 10-year NBA veteran. Remember I told you how to do this? I gave specific instructions on how to do this. Never pretend to be, you know, Larry Bird or Michael Jordan. Pretend to be, you know, the the 12th man, the 11th man. Pretend you play on the third line of the Chicago Blackhawks. Can anybody name the third line right winger for the Chicago Blackhawks? Exactly. They can't. On game night, slick your hair back, wear a brown suit and drink a Bud Light, and you're a hockey player. Poof! You're a hockey player. I've said this many times on the air. And this guy followed my instruction to the letter. Very good pretending to be somebody nobody remembers. That's perfect. 
So it turns out this guy did play with Michael Jordan and Patrick Ewing on the 1984 U.S. Olympic team. Does anybody remember that? <laughs> no. We, we remember Michael Jordan and Patrick Ewing, yes. Turner, 46, now a high school coach in Orlando, retired from the NBA in 1996. The woman said he was supposedly in Florida with his sick mother. The sick mother thing or the, the sick puppy thing. That always works really well, by the way. Yes, uh, that's uh, what she said when she was asked what raised her suspicion about Craven. She said he was very attentive. And all of a sudden, he just stopped while he was in Florida. And it let my mind wander a little. And in the information age, I Googled him. <laughs> the woman, understandably, who asked that her name not be used in this story... <laughs> Saw a 2005 OrlandoMagic.com story reporting that Turner, then a team broadcaster, was leaving to become the head basketball coach at Lake Highland Prep School. She then called Turner, one inch taller and three years older than Craven, who reacted in disbelief. Turner called NBA Security, which has been investigating the matter for the past several weeks. That's who originally contacted me, Turner said of the woman. She was dating this guy under the idea that he was me. He had all my stats. I don't have any recourse or anything. No harm's been done. It's not against the law. It's not identity theft. He hasn't applied for any credit cards. I guess he was trying to live two lives. I wonder, why me? I guess, for whatever reason, he looked enough like me that she thought it was me. But my wife doesn't think so. <laughs> Why you, pal? It's because nobody remembers you. I'm an NBA fan. Anybody remember this guy? Hello? <laughs> Says here, when the woman confronted Craven about his dishonesty, he immediately apologized, she said. He said he didn't know why he did it, yada, 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 she said. This guy really went above and beyond. I knew nothing about basketball. And he said, great, because I hate talking about basketball and girls wanting to be with me just because I was a player. <laughs> Another great line. That's so great that you know nothing about basketball because I'm so tired of women coming up to me all the time about that. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> now, it, it, what does it do? It makes him sound humble. Makes him sound like he just wants to be a regular guy. And not only that, the woman knows nothing about basketball. She doesn't remember. By the way, basketball fans don't remember this guy. Oh, yes. Craven admitted that he wasn't Jeff Turner, but continued to insist that he had played 12 years in the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> That's easy enough to check. Craven admitted to taking his lies even further. After approaching his hometown newspaper about a story, he told several lies to Jack Nikas, a Somerville News reporter and Boston University student. Now that was BS, Craven said of the resulting article. Some of it got discombobulated. But I did represent myself, did I represent, he says, did I represent myself as a Sonics official? It never happened once. According to Nikas, Craven walked into the newspaper's office wearing a Sonics coaching shirt <laughs> and told Nikas he was a coach and scout. He claimed he met Presti when the Sonics GM was a youth basketball player and tried recruiting Presti to Framingham State, a Division Three school, 25 miles west of Boston, where Craven said he was the head coach. Craven said the recruiting process occurred during Presti's senior year of high school in 1993-94. According to Framingham State's website, the coach then was former Boston Celtics player Togo Palazzi. When confronted with those facts, Craven admitted he was actually Palazzi's assistant for six years. 
Craven told the paper Presty passed on Framingham to attend Emerson College. Presty, however, began his career at Virginia Wesleyan before transferring to Emerson as a sophomore. I mean, this guy just went on and on. He took out the shovel and just kept shoveling. <laughs> It it just it just goes on. Look, I I could sit here and read this story to you all day, but you get the idea. The bottom line here, it seems, this guy pretended to be a relatively obscure NBA player in order to get laid, and the woman who uh, feels that she was scorned now is calling the newspapers and trying to embarrass this guy, and that's her right. She has the right to do that. But come on. Lying is an integral part of getting laid. Did this guy really do anything wrong? Tom. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom. It's the Tom Likas Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the program. We appreciate it. And now... We're talking about the guy in Somerville, Massachusetts, who pretended to be a coach or an assistant coach or a former NBA player for the Seattle Supersonics. But he hasn't done anything illegal. He hasn't uh, hasn't applied for a credit card. He hasn't tried to get free meals at restaurants that we know of. He hasn't tried to uh, defraud anybody for money. He hasn't stolen anything that we know of. And by the way, we, we talked a couple of months ago about a story that had appeared on TMZ about a guy who was going around L.A. pretending to be Doug Allen, the creator of the HBO TV series Entourage. This guy was getting around town so much that the people at HBO actually put out a press release saying that this isn't Doug Allen. But honestly, is it the fault of the guy's who are pretending to be other people? Or is it the fault of women for being a bunch of money-grubbing gold diggers who the minute they find out you've got any connection to money, power, or fame, they just glom onto you? I mean, honestly, ladies, if you didn't react positively when we say that we're a doctor, when we say that we're a lawyer, when we say that we're a radio talk show host, if you didn't react so positively and give us everything we want, no guy would bother impersonating anybody because there'd be no gain from it. The reason guys do this is because you're all so, not all, most of you are so superficial. Most of you are so addicted to the idea of getting near somebody who has money, power, or fame that you'll have sex with any guy. I will never forget the woman I dated. The woman I dated who, uh, did not sleep with me on the first couple of dates because she told me she's not that kind of girl. Who later admitted that uh, she went out with a Hall of Fame baseball player. And he is the old trick. He said, come back to my apartment. And she was drunk and she went back to his place. And when she got there, there was stuff all over the apartment. He said, well, I just moved in. There was really only one flat space to sit down, and guess where that was? (laughs) It was in his bedroom. That's right. And one thing led to another. And, uh, yeah, she got nailed on the first date. So the fact is, when a woman says that she, uh, when a woman says she's not that kind of girl, she's not that kind of girl with you. But if she meets a rock star, or if she meets George Clooney, or if she meets Colin Farrell, if she meets Brad Pitt, she's willing to be that kind of girl. And and some women sell themselves really cheaply, because if she's willing to go out with some NBA player that I'm an NBA fan, I don't remember this guy. Gary, you're an NBA fan. Do you remember this guy? No. Played on the U.S. Olympic team with Michael Michael Jordan and Patrick Ewing. Anybody remember that? No. A perfect name to use. He went out with it 12 times. The reason guys lie about this stuff is because chicks are so superficial. 
1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Michelle on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Tom. Hi, Michelle. I've been listening to you for many years, and this is the first time I've called in. I appreciate what you're saying about how women are attracted to these high-power people, whether they're athletes or professionals, because of the money issue. But someone like myself, and I think a lot of my friends, are attracted to men like that because of the ambition and the drive that they have. That's sexy. That's what's attractive to me. Not a trash guy or a guy who settles on being a, a salesman for somebody, but someone who has ambition, someone who's educated. So by telling that to men, what you're telling us is, uh, you know, why would a hardworking guy who works as a plumber want to tell you he's a plumber? I mean, he might as well tell you that he played, uh, you know, that, that he played for the Clippers in 1987. But he didn't. But, I mean, how, but by that. the time you find that out, we already got what we wanted. <laughs> right, touche. I mean, women okay. always assume we're looking to get married when we tell these lies. We're not. We're looking to get laid. The guy in the article said, quote, I'm look- I was, was I looking to get some? Yes. I understand that. I, I guess, as, still, as a woman who doesn't maybe know that what, you know what that guy's intention is originally, maybe it's a... Like a listener, maybe it's someone who does want to have a relationship. We don't know that going in on the first day. Somebody who wants to have a relationship it does not lie about who they are to get laid. How late. do we know that, that first date? How do we know he's But that's on? my point. <laughs> well, I guess we agree. The though. thing is, if you would jump into the sack without knowing that somebody is who they say they, they are, you're getting exactly what you deserve. I agree. I'm just saying that. I mean, isn't the important thing that you think you're in bed with an NBA player? You think you're in bed with a rock star? Isn't that what's important? No, not as important as... Yeah, you know, got to talk into the phone, that dear. Type of person. What's that? It's, it's not as important as what the ambition is that drives that person. The attraction no, but the, the, the point is, when you get in the sack with the guy, he's not going to be ambitious. He's not going to be out doing Maybe deals or winning in the NBA Finals. Maybe he's got some confidence and some um, other appealing characteristics that it's just an average, you know, white, uh, blue-collar worker doesn't have. But if you, how would you know? You know, I, by the way, I don't know how many athletes you've met. But aside um, from the not- fact, aside, uh, by the way, I've met, I met him in all sports. All the major team sports in this country. You know, football, baseball, basketball, hockey. And a lot of these guys are just average Joes with a talent, and they suddenly went from being nobody to making five, ten, twenty million dollars a year. They are average Joes. That's what they are. They have they're average Joes with one specific talent. Many of them are very one dimensional. Well, in that case, I guess you would figure that out. As a woman. Darling, are you talking into the phone? Yes. All right, that's enough. I can't take it anymore. Oh, it's all about the ambition. Like, how would you know? Well, you know, if he's just some average guy, he doesn't have the same ambition. How would you know? I've said this many times on the air. This is absolutely true. I wonder how many women said no to Brad Pitt before he was known. Do you know that Brad Pitt, this is not a joke and it's not made up. This is a fact. I'm sure Brad would sue me, so trust me, I would not risk my reputation and my bank account on saying something that's not true. Brad Pitt, before he made it as a famous actor, used to dress up like a chicken, and he used to stand outside at El Pollo Loco here in Los Angeles. You know how, like, the Quiznos, uh, the people outside of Quiznos stay there dressed as a cup of soda? With a straw coming out of their head, or they wave you into the parking lot, or there's a guy at the Subway Sandwiches on Wilshire Boulevard who dresses up like a Subway sandwich. And there's like, it's a sandwich, like stood on its end, and there's like a lettuce leaf coming out the top, supposed to look like a pompadour. <laughs> like it's his hair. <laughs> and he waves you into the parking lot. Brad Pitt used to dress like a chicken for El Pollo Loco. I'm serious. Now, can you imagine Brad Pitt, what kind of game he had to have back then? If he had any, I'll bet you anything that women saw this guy dressed in a chicken suit or asked, what do you do for a living, Brad? Well, I'm an aspiring actor, but right now I'm I'm dressing up as a chicken. 
working in front of El Pollo Loco. I, I wonder how many women said, why don't you call me when you get a real job, Brad? <laughs> I'm, there are probably women within the sound of my voice who met Brad Pitt around, you know, 1988 or 1989 or 1990. Walking around in his chicken suit. <laughs> just just amazing. But, he, but the thing is, the guy's Brad Pitt. So if somebody comes up to you and says, I played in the NBA, and you believe it, and you go to bed with the guy, and, and like he, he rocks your world, does it really matter what the truth is? Does it really matter? Tom like it. 1 800 5800 Tom. From Hollywood, I. I'm Tom Likas. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. We're talking about a guy in Somerville, Massachusetts, who's been pretending to be a relatively obscure NBA player, a former player, and um, has also pretended to be an assistant coach for the Seattle Supersonics. <laughs> What's the big deal? He's trying to get laid. The guy met some chick on Craigslist. So what? It's one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. It's Bob on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Tom, we have this down to a science. You know, we, over, the, over time, we figured out we'd go in and we'd say we were base, either baseball or hockey players over in Anaheim. And it got to the point where we'd bring baseballs into the club. And if we saw a couple hot chicks... What the idea was, you'd go over and just kind of stand by yourself leaning against the bar, and your buddy would come up and say, hey, man, you might you sign this? And you pull up, I'll sign it, but, you know, keep it down. I don't, you know, I don't want the attention. And these whores would come over and, who are you? And you just play it off like, ah, uh, you know, I, I, I get played to chase a little ball around. And they would fall for it, hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> and, guys, if you don't try this, you're nuts. Because once they find out you're a pro, pro athlete, yeah, you, you got it. You got it. Absolutely. And that's when they start uh, start leaving the diaphragm at home, too. Well, that's why you got to uh, bring your own protection. That's, that's oh, exactly definitely. right. Yeah, you're definitely true, because I couldn't tell you how many times, oh, I can't get pregnant. Oh, yeah, you can. <laughs> By the way, uh, speaking of that, uh, there is a particular pitcher. That could be one of many. But there's a particular pitcher for the Dodgers, who I know for a fact. Uh, when when chicks would uh, toss him a baseball for to sign an autograph, uh, he'd add in his cell phone number. Oh, sweet! You know, and another key is you can't say you're uh, Derek Jeter. You know, you got to be a bench player because uh, you know somehow you know one of, the, one of the girls' guy friends might come over. That's not Derek Jeter. You know, you I'm not going to say the names we'd use, but you know, you'd be a backup player. Yeah. That you know, you know the name, but you wouldn't really know the face. And only some of us can pull off Chin Lung Ku. <laughs> I, I didn't try that one. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Tanji on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you doing? Doing great. That's good. I just want to say that I've been just started listening to your show a few months ago. A guy at work got me hooked to it, and I love it. But to the comment, I'm 23. I live in L.A., and I've been in that whole scene with that basketball players, and it really is ridiculous because once you give them that look, they're going to treat you exactly how they feel at that moment. That's usually, I want to hit, take her back to the room, and it's just crazy how a lot of girls, they still go for it because they're in that environment, they're drinking, their whole allure of, ooh, it's it's Chris Paul or, you know, somebody like that, and it really is ridiculous. And a lot of the guys, that, at least my experience, they've been not, you know, no curse words, but they've been, you know, just losers, like just terrible people. <laughs> crazy. How some girls are really just, you know, they'll go, they'll like, you know what, yeah, he called me a B when we first met him, but it's all right. You know, we're going to see where this goes. <laughs> it's the most ridiculous thing. It is crazy. They, they do the whole caveman thing. You give them the eye, and the next thing you know, they're throwing you over their shoulder and taking you back to the room. It's the most silly thing. I, I just don't know how some girls fall for it. It's ridiculous. Well, some girls like to bring Kobe towels at midnight. You know the deal. Uh, that, that is too much. But that's all I want to say. I think you're great, and you're hilarious. Oh, thank you, Tanji. Also, I'm recruiting more uh, black people to uh, listen to your show. I'm telling all my friends, like, hey, I got to listen to this guy. He's hilarious. <laughs> I you're love that. 
<laughs> so you're getting more African American listeners. I got your back. I love that, Tangie. Thank you so much. Right. No problem. You have a great day. You too. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to uh, oh, Martha on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Oh, I'm sorry. I picked up the wrong one. Uh, this is Martha. Hello? Hello, Martha. I'm right-handed. I use my left hand to pick up the phone. I picked up the wrong line. <laughs> it's okay. I'm first-time caller. I'm really excited. Thank you. <laughs> I've been listening to you for about a month now. I wanted to comment on the topic that you were talking about. The way I feel is, she's, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you said she's only been on 12 dates with him? 12 dates. Okay. I don't think she should be upset. 12 dates, it's like he didn't promise you anything. Yeah, boo-hoo, he lied to you. But if her main operative was to date this guy for the money, then she, she deserves what she got. But if her operative was to find a nice guy, then she needs to work on her judgment. And another thing, I feel if you're going to be a gold digger, I don't agree with being gold diggers, but I have friends who are, and I feel anything you do in life, you should go for the top. So why is she settling for some obscure guy? She should really find, like, the Derek Jeter, the Kobe Bryant. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, but, but the thing is, the average woman is not hot enough to get the Derek Jeter or the Kobe Bryant. So then they're settling. <laughs> right. I look at Kobe Bryant's wife. She's a 10 plus. Of course. She's beautiful. Vanessa. So, so an eight is not going to get Kobe Bryant. Uh, Derek Jeter. I mean, the, the homeliest woman he went out with was Mariah Carey. Yeah. I don't know. I just don't understand what she's trying to gain from calling him out like that. He clearly likes the attention that he's getting, whether it's through his Well, life, here's why. She, you know what? If they said, well, we have to use your name in the article, we can't do this anonymously, she wouldn't say a word. Yeah, she's doing this okay. because she can hide behind a cloak of anonymity. Okay. Because I was just thinking she's humiliating herself. That's why I didn't understand why she would do it. Well, because we don't know who she is. Oh, well then. <laughs> She gets to win. She gets to put him on blast, and she, I guess, gets to leave with I mean, What I'm amazed at is that the newspaper agreed to publish this without saying the name of the person. Well, that's not right. That's not credible. She needs to see who she is and shut up. Right, but she doesn't want people knowing, and that way she can just say anything she wants about this guy. Yeah, that's not right. So, yeah. <laughs> all right, Tom, well, thank you for letting me call and talk to you. <laughs> thank you, Martha. Have a good one. Appreciate Bye. the call. Carolyn on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. How are you, Tom? Doing great. Um, so I had something today about today's topic. Um, I would not want the high-powered Kobe Bryant or high-powered lawyer, anything like that, because they're always going to be gone on business. Lord knows what they're always doing when they're out on the road. So why would I want to be sitting at home waiting for this guy to come home? Darling, I most women don't think about that. They think about the money and the car they're going to be driving. Money. I don't want the money. I want the man who's going to have the average job, who's going to be able to come home at 5 o'clock. No, but that's who you want to marry. Again, yeah, we, I, no, I, when, when, when I talk to women, I always general. have to separate. I always have to separate out the difference between marriage and getting late. Because uh, the fact is that most women will date 10, 20, 50 high-powered rich guys, famous guys, as many as they can get their hands on. Then, they'll, then they, they will, darling. After they have sex with them. Nothing. They're going to do nothing for them. That's why I'd rather not try and go get laid by some rich and famous guy. What is he going to do to me? The only thing he's going to do is if I get pregnant and have his child. And Lord knows I'm not trying to get pregnant by somebody who... You know, it's hard enough to track down as is. There's somebody you're never going to see. Some of these women get clothing and cars bought for them. Mm -hmm. Some of them just enjoy walking around town going, I go out with that. You know, they, they, they enjoy I, that. I'm speaking for the little percentage of women who do not want that. I want to be able but to. But you're in the minority. The you admit you're in the minority, right? I I'm in the minority. I don't want a guy or have sex with a guy who's got lots of money. You know what I mean? Because you are just one of the many millions of women. Now, darling, what, what do you look like? What do I look like? Yes. I think I'm beautiful. I don't know about any of you guys. You guys can all judge me if you want. Well, I do. just I tell me, tell me what other people think of you. Oh, other people think I'm beautiful. But the thing is, is I have the personality 
of, like, I have a really good personality. Guys don't care about your personality. They care about um, what you look like. I have all the things that a guy wants. Plus, I'm one of those chicks who would rather go to a Dodger game or a Laker game on top of a row over a romantic dinner any day of the week. So you were 9 or 10? I'm a, I'm a good, I'm a 10. I'm a 10. You're I'm a 10. If so I you're perfect. So you're perfect looking. You have no flaws. Well, it's not that every woman has flaws. Well, every ten, a ten, flaws. ten means perfect. I am As perfect. in the phrase, I have the perfect personality. No, 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 no. Ten does not rate your personality. Ten is a rating of your appearance. Appearance? I think I'm hot. Does that mean you're perfect looking? Yes, I am perfect looking. So you have I no flaws. I have no flaws, no. What do you look like? What do I look like? Yeah. I'm a 4'11", um, tan-skinned Egyptian girl. How much do you weigh, darling? How much do I weigh? I weigh about 160, and that's not a lie. How much? 160. You're 4'11", and you weigh 160? Yes, but I am not huge. I have a big darling, boobs and a big darling, butt. Darling, unless your boobs are 80 pounds. They're a good 80 pounds. They are not 80 pounds. <laughs> There is no I. We, we you come in here. We'll we'll get the scale. <laughs> you weigh a hundred and sixty, darling. A hundred and sixty is too much of your five seven. If, if somebody is five seven, okay. But you have to see. No that wonder. No wonder you are, you couldn't get a celebrity if you tried. Oh no no no, honey. If I wanted a celebrity, I could get a celebrity. Name I one. Could choose not to have one. Na yeah. Well, that's what all the fem the women who are one hundred and sixty pounds say. You're out of control. I love it. Darling, I mean, do you really think a guy who makes $20 million a year can't do better than 160 pounds? Um, I think he could do better, definitely. But could she be better in bed than me? Da I darling, so. we, we, they, they don't care about that. You see, before they can get to bed with you, they have to be aroused. They have to be aroused. And, if, be aroused. and if you are four... You're four, questioning me. You're questioning if you're me. under so five you feet tall, if you're under five feet tall... And you're 160 pounds. That means you've got rolls of fat. Sweaty, drippy rolls of fat. <laughs> and when you take your top off, guys have got to look at that. And they look at, you know, they, much as they might want to look at your boobs, eventually they're going to look down and see those rolls. Oh, that's really harsh. But you know it's true. It's not true because I don't have rolls. Darling, at 160, where are you storing it all? It's not in your I boobs. Literally, all of my friends ask me the same thing. It's all in my ass. I and send in us. My yeah, boobs. I'll bet it's in your ass too. Why don't you send us send us a photo or ten, and uh, we'll post them on my MySpace page. We'll let the audience I be the judge. MySpace page. Tom. Send us send us the link, and we will put your photos on our MySpace page for evaluation. Okay, that sounds good. I you won't do it. On my you won't do it, will you? I will. I swear to God, I will go online today Hold on. and I Dean, will add you on Dean my is going to facilitate this. What do you mean? He's Dean. I'm going to put you on with Dean, the screener. You talked to Dean okay. earlier, and Dean is going to set it up so that we're going to get your photos. Okay. And then we're going to let the guys out there decide if 160 is the appropriate weight for a woman under five feet tall. Okay, sounds good. All right. She's a piggy piggy. Oh, Jesus. I've heard of belly dancing in the Middle East, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. Tom at blowmeuptom.com.